tidal cycles occur twice a day, each time the Earth passes one of two bulges. The tide that bulges toward the Moon is a direct result of the Moon's gravity pulling on the surface of the ocean as the Earth revolves past it. The tide that bulges away from the Moon on the far side of the Earth is a result of water lagging behind. Since that water is furthest from the Moon, the attraction is weaker. So the far side water is left slightly behind as the Earth rotates forward, producing the bulge and a second high tide. But it's not only water that experiences high and low tides. Entire continents are also affected by the Moon's pull. The solid Earth itself does deform under the lunar gravity influence, and it bulges as well. Now, it's only about a foot of amplitude from high tide to low tide, but the whole continent is rising and falling. It's not something that we can perceive. Sensitive instruments can pick this up. During an eclipse, when the sun and moon's forces are combined, tides are highest at that time. But as the moon retreats, there will be no more eclipses. Without the moon's gravity, the 14-foot ocean bulge at the equator would dissipate and move towards each pole. As that water redistributes, sea levels will likely rise in New York City. As well as in Brazil's Rio de Janeiro. Flooding would render both cities uninhabitable, leaving millions displaced or worse. These disaster scenarios aren't science fiction. The moon is moving away from Earth. And when the moon's gravity no longer protects our planet, we're doomed. Laser light measurements accurate to the width of a human fingernail prove that the moon is retreating from Earth further each year. Just 25,000 miles more, and it's lights out for life as we know it. To understand where the moon might be headed, we have to understand where it's been and how it formed in the first place. The Earth and the Moon did not always exist. There was a time when they both formed. The way that the Moon formed was a cataclysmic event that happened on the order of four and a half billion years ago. So this material is swirling around in the solar system, forming this protoplanet that's going to become our Earth. So your planet is molten, a lot of it's melted, this rock. And what happened was a very large Mars-sized body, so a very big piece of rock, came and impacted this early Earth. It hit at an ideal 45 degree angle. A more direct hit may have destroyed early Earth altogether. A more glancing blow would have expelled less debris, the foundation for our moon today. Still, a collision between these two early planets was likely inevitable. And these two planets were running almost the same orbit around the sun. The, this configuration was an, an accident just waiting, waiting to take place because running this, this close orbit, they, they're bound to collide at some point. And the Mars-sized planet banged into the early Earth and the rocky materials were ejected, a big uh, cloud of rocks and, and debris. And that material it gets ejected out far enough away from the Earth to go in orbit around the Earth. While a lot of rocky material was blown into space, the heavier metals, like iron, sank down into the Earth. 
and the metal parts melted together and formed the core of Earth. Well, here is a piece of iron that fell from the sky, and that is a spare part from when Earth was first formed four and a half billion years ago. And uh, it is an iron meteorite, and originally it formed the core of a small planet that has now been destroyed. But not all of the rocky material fell back onto the Earth. And so as that material goes around, it starts to hit together and starts to collide. And sometimes when it collides, it accretes together and it sticks. We call that accretion. Where pieces of rock and dust and ice are coming together and sticking together, you eventually build up the moon. And so the moon was actually born out of this very early baby Earth. Its birth took just one month. Not only is the moon the child of the Earth, it's also Earth's protector. Those pieces of iron and heavy metal that were left behind by what became the moon merged with the iron already in the Earth to give the Earth a larger molten metal core. Earth's metal core generates a strong magnetic field, which extends thousands of miles out into space. This protective field keeps Earth's atmosphere in place. Without it, cosmic rays from the sun would eliminate Earth's atmosphere and liquid water. So without the moon, there would be no air to breathe or water to drink. If it weren't for the moon, if, we did not, if this planet did not have a moon, then we probably would not be here to talk about it. It is quite possible that there would not be life on our planet Earth if we didn't have a moon. Earth might look a bit like Mars, lifeless. Mars is barren of both a thick atmosphere and liquid water on its surface. Early in its life, Mars likely had both. But its magnetic field soon faded, and any water either evaporated or froze solid. Scientists are still uncertain why, but one fact is clear. Mars never had a large, stabilizing moon to help it reach its full planetary potential. You could easily imagine you could have microbial life on Earth without the moon. It is possible life established itself on Mars or Venus very early on, but never really got control over the planet. But on Earth, what's another interesting thing is that life has kind of taken control of, of Earth environment and preserved life as an oasis for, for life. So it might be that without the moon, maybe life had established itself, but due to environmental problems, life would kind of have uh, never gotten to, to take control, and Earth could have maybe gone on uh, evolution, the same as Venus. Venus has almost 500 degrees centigrade on the surface today, and no life. And Earth might have fallen into a similar situation. Our moon also protects us from meteors and asteroids. Some craters on the moon are a thousand miles across. The result of collisions with massive space rocks 170 miles in size. Without the moon, chances are that some of these asteroids will hit the Earth. And when they do, the consequences for life on Earth will be dire. The seven-mile-wide meteor that wipes out the dinosaurs is about three billion times more powerful than both nuclear bombs dropped on Japan. First, it vaporizes dust and blasts rock into space. Then, molten debris rains down across the globe. It starts raging fires across the continents, setting in motion a chain reaction of more heat and more fire. For an hour after impact, Earth's atmosphere boils to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Hot enough to cook the dinosaurs alive. For six more months, smoke and ash prevent most sunlight from reaching Earth. 
The asteroids' combined effects kill nearly 75% of all species on Earth. Today, the Earth's human population is around 6.7 billion and growing. If a half-mile wide asteroid, just 15% of the size of the one that killed the dinosaurs, strikes the Earth, it could kill as many as a billion people, depending on where it lands. Even an ocean strike could trigger a tsunami that kills millions. So, are we destined to a future of unpredictable destruction without the Moon's protective gravity as a shield? The answer may be buried deep in Earth's past. The Moon's gravity has propped up Earth's stable axis for four and a half billion years. Without it, life as we know it would not exist. But recent precise lunar measurements indicate our Moon is retreating from Earth. Determining what this might mean for Earth's future requires searching for clues in its past. <laughs> 